to myself sometimes. It's good to see that I'm able to see myself. It's good to be my father. Sudah, sudah. Jadi, okay. Is ready? Say three, two, one. Okay. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back with the lecture on research uh, methodology. Uh, we are discussing research strategies and research philosophies. Um, now, uh, we are going into uh, a research philosophy. We are discussing research philosophy and research strategy uh, that is uh, called deductive research strategies. Next one. Yeah. So I got to I got to speak again. Okay. The next one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, we are discussing a research methodology with special emphasis on research strategies and research philosophies. Now. We are embarking into a discussion, a discourse of uh, research strategy known as the deductive research strategy. Right? And this is the story about uh, deductive research strategy and the critical rationalism as, as its underlying philosophy. Uh, see, we have a picture of Thor there because what we want to emphasize is that the hammer of Thor Right, uh, and the T there uh, represent the, the, the hammer and also Thor. But be, be, be cautious of searching the term hammer of, hammer of Thor <laughs> because I did that and I discovered something else besides Milnir. That's the name of the hammer of Thor. But if you Google or whatever else you use, DuckDuckGo or whatever else you can use, right? DuckDuckGo or... or, or uh, 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 Yahoo and all that, right? Uh, uh, right? You tap hammer of Thor, you get something else, right? Use your imagination. Uh, so now, the story of this deductive research, right? And the, the philosophy of critical rationalism is this. Look, if you look at inductive research strategy as a research um, perspective, as a research paradigm, and if you look at positivism, as a logic of inquiry, right? The logic of inquiry is based on observation. And I ask you, if I collect data of five, ten horses, and ten horses have four legs, I collect hundred, uh, uh, observe hundred horses, hundred horses have ten, four, four legs as well. I, I observe further, right, with, with one thousand horses. All one thousand horses have four legs. Now I ask you, do all horses have four legs? The answer is no. The answer is no. Why? Because you cannot generalize based on limited observation. You can possibly, you can talk about different degree of generalization, different confidence levels and all that. But as a basis, as the foundation of knowledge, observation is limited. And equally important is the idea of going into a research without having concepts to carry out a research to collect data. Uh, if you do not have the word, the concept to collect data, you might not be able to collect that data. You might not be able to see what you do not have uh, language of, right? If you do not have the lens, you might not see it, right? I will go deeper into this idea. So critical rationalism is a philosophy of emphasizing logic as emphasizing rationality as even being a more paramount uh, factor in carrying out research. But to have rationality, to have rationalism in a critical way, not in a blind, uh, not in a with blind loyalty, right? Why? And you'll see uh, that uh, the critical rationalism as a philosophy, you know, one of the founders, uh, Karl Popper, 
who actually lived in both the Eastern Europe as well as the Western Europe. Uh, at that time, Eastern Europe was under a communist rule, and then he went moved on to the East to Western Europe, which is captain's rule. Right? Uh, he sees that uh, scholars in both worlds basically are not critical of the ideology, of the dogma, of the orthodoxies. In fact, they were carrying out research in line with the orthodoxies, in line with the dominant paradigm of the society, not being critical enough, right? You will pursue this idea further. And we will see why this milnia, this hammer of four, is important in deductive research where the T is very, very crucial. Next, please. Go. Deductive research strategy. The ontological assumptions are very much similar with the uh, inductive research strategy, right? So ontological assumptions is about the world being orderly, uh, that we can understand the world through complex relations of concepts that we should be describing concept, uh, the world uh, as, as of, uh, concepts that can be uh, uh, related between w uh, one, two, three, four concepts and form a bigger uh, complex uh, understanding of a particular reality or phenomenon. Right. So the ontological assumption about social reality remain the same. But the difference is in epistemological assumption. The epistemological assumption states that knowledge produced through observations are dependent on theories. Observation is not king. See, if you do not have the color, if you only have the color of blue and green in your mind, you cannot see a color in between blue and green. Right? Uh, you cannot see the color turquoise which is not quite green and not quite blue because your lens is limited, your language is limited and you might not be able to see the concept. If you do not have the concept of photosynthesis, right? The photosynthesis is the, where the, 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 the concept, the, the scientific concept of how uh, plants uh, produce energy, absorb energy and, 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 and release uh, a turn carbon dioxide into oxygen and all that, right? Uh, if you do not have the model of photosynthesis, you cannot see photosynthesis. There is no photosynthesis. Now, this is photosynthesis in reality. No. You've got to create the model and explain the model and you'll see photosynthesis. Right? You cannot see veto power. Veto power is some, a concept that is, is beyond observation, right? You can see manifestation of veto power, but you cannot see veto power, right? So, Researchers cannot pursue a particular research question if the researchers do not have concepts or languages or lenses to collect the data. So you need to have data, you need to have the lenses, the concepts and language. Which means that we are all biased. We are, our, our, our research capability is limited to our concepts, our knowledge which are all tainted and slanted towards certain uh, tendencies. So we are not biased. Researchers are innately biased because of the languages, lenses they uh, are, are taught, uh, they are culturalized into, right? Number three, all knowledge is tentative and subject to ongoing critical evaluation. So, um, uh, deductive research strategy doesn't prescribe to the idea, or sorry, doesn't subscribe to the idea of uh, laws as being laws, you know, almost like total truth, right? Um, they believe that we can only arrive inch towards the truth. We can never know the total truth. But because what we can do is to reject false theories. And whatever remaining is considered as tentatively supported by evidence. That the truth is tentative. The, the truth is temporary. So you cannot prove a theory to be right. You can prove a theory to be wrong. Um, you can say that the theory is supported by evidence so far, but whenever there's a new evidence, you can reject the theory. Next, please. Mm. So deductive... Uh, Research and critical rationalism is also uh, referred to uh, as post-positivism, right? 
it says that all observations are considered all observations are considered to be dependent on the theory and observations within which exist within the horizon of expectation so we might not see what what uh, phenomena exist outside of our horizon of expectation but if you do not have the word uh, i saw somebody who's from uh, gender studies right uh, from kanita gender studies right uh, i was once in kanita as well if you do not have the word sexual harassment you might not see the behavior of sexual harassment because sexual harassment is a collection of concepts and if you do not have the term to describe sexual the behavior and the collection of concepts a collection of behaviors right you might not see sexual harassment so having that term is important to see the phenomena this is what critical rationalism is saying right so if you go blindly with the data they say well there's not sexual harassment it's just somebody whistling to someone it's just somebody looking at someone it's just somebody saying a joke to someone right but you put them all together it might constitute a form of sexual harassment so sexual harassment as a concept as a theory as a lens must be constructed and conveyed then you will see the 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 uh, the, 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 the phenomena right uh, what is it i want to see yeah okay if i if i was to show you this this thing this thing or this, this thing right uh, I, people might not know if you do not know what this is you, you might not see what this is you do not know what it means right this is a remote it's a remote control right remote control sort of uh, a gate right uh, uh, you might see plastic you might see uh, two buttons you might see screws right but you do not know what the function is what 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 is this but if you have the concept of what this is you can start to say ah oh, this is a remote control right uh, so unless you have the concept unless you have certain ideas that can lead to that concept you might not see the concept this is what critical rationalism prescribes right uh, so theories number two theories are boldly put forward for try to be eliminated if they clash with observations so the task of social scientists the task this is an important part is to challenge and be critical towards dogmatic thinking and disprove any false theory so the principle of falsification the t there right is an important principle any theory that cannot be falsified is not a scientific theory i repeat that any theory hypothesis um, proposition right that cannot be falsified is not considered a scientific theory scientific uh, hypothesis so just now is about observation right here is about falsification so you, they got to go through that will near testing if, if you can break it you can break that theory through observation if you can prove through collection of data to say that this theory is wrong then you reject that theory but if you cannot break it right if you cannot break it you cannot say it's true you can only say that so far the evidence support what the theory says it's not necessarily true it's true only tentatively speaking right next please okay so the deductive research strategy um, there are four essences right so we will start at uh, the essences are uh, if we derive hypothesis from theory you have theory right uh, from the theory you develop hypothesis not hypothesis and many hypotheses you can put different uh, hypotheses from different theories together and then you collect data and you can see whether the theory is false or not right you test the theory if the test fails the theory is false the theory is rejected if the test succeeds the theory is corroborated but not proven to be true so for deductive research strategy for critical rationalism as a philosophy you can come you can only come closer and closer to the total truth 
you can never know the total truth, generally speaking, right? Because total truth is such, is such a big concept, it's such a big thing, it might involve so many variables, and we might not be capturing, understanding, collecting all the data that's necessary to arrive at the total truth. So we can only, only corroborate, support theory with the current level of evidence, right? So we can come close to the truth, but you can never get to the total truth, right? So this is as, uh, the four senses. Uh, so the next, uh, the four key steps uh, to deductive research strategy from observable events, observable patterns. So you see certain observation, uh, and you say, well, what, what would be the theories relevant to this observation? Uh, then you say, well, uh, this, this theory explained about this observation, that theory is explained about the same observation. I have three different theories about the, this observation, and let's think about hypothesis from these three different theories, and then you test this hypothesis. If the test, if the data, uh, if there's confirmation from the observation, then the theory is supported tentatively. If not, the theory is rejected. It's like it has to go through that hammer of four, right? <laughs> millennium, the millennium. If the millennium cannot break it, right, then the theory is supported. And the theory is corroborated, but not proven true yet. Right? Uh, so, so this is the essence of deductive. That's why the T, the millennium, the hammer of four is important, right? Um, okay, we will. Uh, take another one minute break. Uh, the refreshing, refresher, refreshment break, and then 